guy Bindu, and I'm coming at y'all with a video today. Apologies for missing Monday, guys. Uh, work was kind of hectic, and I was I was dog tired. And then over the weekend, you know, I was being a lazy boy, no sofa, bars, son. But yeah, um, all jokes aside, though, because this is not a joking manner. As a lot of you probably know, uh, you have heard uh, Julian Assange has lost his extradition case. Um, his lawyers are going to appeal. You know, they're going to appeal the case as they should. Um, but it's not. It's looking very grim right now. And you know, um, we got we we all know the 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 attack on journalism that this is. I'm going to be talking about that more later on in the video. But um, just off the top though, I wanted to read through this george galloway um he wrote an op-ed for rt that i found interesting and i found like it kind of goes into the you know the china topic a little bit and i just found it fascinating honestly it was one of the things i saw that you know popped up on my feed um when i heard the news and went to twitter to you know figure out what was going on and everything usually for my assange news i stick to taylor hudak Hudick, I, I I apologize if I'm butchering her name. If she ever sees this video, I'm so sorry if I'm butchering your name. Uh, she's pretty dope on Assange. Uh, Chris Hedges is as well. Definitely Richard Medhurst. He does good coverage on Assange as well. Um, and then I'm sure there's people I'm leaving behind. I think Glenn Greenwald, even though he doesn't like, he doesn't do like what Richard does. Like I believe Richard has actually been to at the actual courthouse at one of the hearings. And he does like the ver he's in like the virtual courtroom as well. So um as well as Taylor, I believe, too. So um all the people I listed are dope. And you know, just a couple, you know, um uh comrade uh comrade Misty, I believe that's how you say her name. Uh sarcasm stardust on Twitter. Um her advocacy for Assange is, you know, is freaking amazing, man. She catches so much, so much hate for it. It's so ridiculous, you know, the fact that she catches all the hate she does for it advocating for a journalist it's so weird like um and i know a lot of you saw the you know hassan video of him you know uh with the jackson hinkle thing now, i know a couple people said like he edited the video to stand the third but the sentiment was you know was there still the same he was being very dismissive of it and that's because those guys don't do journalism bro he's a twitch streamer now um you know jenk and all. i'm gonna i'm gonna get into all that so let's go ahead and get into this george galloway um Let's get into this George this George Galloway op-ed. So off rip that the, you know the, the the title caught my attention. Imagine if Assange had exposed Chinese crimes and not U, uh, U.S. ones. Uh, this is written by George Galloway, as I said, uh, on December tenth, twenty twenty one. If Julian Assange were a Chinese journalist and publisher, he'd have the Nobel Prize, be the centerpiece of Human Rights Day. And this week, his portrait would have been uh, planted atop President Joe Biden's democracy summit. So that was the, you know, off rip. That was one of the things I found so freaking hilarious that while they're doing this, you know, um, this uh, democracy summit and everything to basically uh, shit on China and Russia as well. Uh, but more so this is they're literally they're going hard ball on China right now. So uh, like it's, it's 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 crazy to see that's and that's why I've been talking about it a lot recently because they're going hard ball and it's it's very scary to watch, you know, um these two nuclear powers move, you know, closer and closer to conflict. It's very scary to watch. But um Yeah, but literally as this freedom summit is going on, Assange loses his his extra his extradition case, a journalist. And like I said before, um, George Galloway is going to go into a lot of it, but this is a guy who was doing journalism. You know, when it came to the um, to the Chelsea Manning stuff, he was doing what every journalist does with his source. If you guys want to hear about it, I will recommend watching Glenn Greenwald's video. I might react to it on here too. Um, I kind of forgot about that. I should. I, I might react to. It. I might pull it up on YouTube in a minute or so and react to it. But, um, but yeah, that's just that's the irony of this. All the, like the United States, like I say this all the time, the United States is a big fucking projection machine. Like er, literally everything, you know, they they say about, you know, foreign foreign powers that that are in conflict with the United States, whether it be economically um, or otherwise, like whether it's true or not, it always like literally that it, like the United States is literally doing that and sometimes even worse. So it's like it's it's crazy to see this, you know. And there's a great clip. I think I played it on the channel before, but the the Azerbaijan president, um, just like literally shitting on, you know, um, a, a Western journalist, and I, I I'm going to talk about that soon too. But um, but yeah, 
George Galloway is 100% right here. If, John, if if he were Chinese, if he if he were a Chinese, or even if he was just white, if he was just Julian Assange the way he is now, and he was publishing Chinese secrets, like, they would be all over this. You know, Julie, he would be hailed as a hero. Literally. Um, if Chinese crimes rather than American crimes have been revealed by Assange, he would now be the poster boy for the Winter Olympics boycott campaign. So that's another thing I'm going to be talking about as well in tandem with the uh, Zheng Zhang import ban, import ban that I'm going to be talking about uh, when it comes to the squad. But yeah, he like he would be front and center again. You know, he would be they would he would be he would be a hero. Every news bulletin today would have led with his fate. Every press still turning would be rolling out the out of the outrage at the crushing of this butterfly on the wheel. His crime, though, is that he exposed inter alia uh, U.S. war crimes in Iraq, including assassinations. More than uh, 15,000 unreported deaths of civilians. The torture of men and boys aged between 14 and 89 at Guantanamo. The U.S. illegally spying on U.N. secretary generals and other, and other diplomats. Uh, <coughs> the CIA. And, <coughs> I'm sorry about that, guys. Throat's kind of dry. Uh, the CIA instigated military coup in Honduras in 2009 and the U.S. the U.S.'s secret war on Yemen in which um, in which uh, thousands have been killed. Almost uncountable, egregious, uh, you know, um, um, be, well, we actually I, I want to stop before because before I go into this next paragraph, I just want to um, talk about what he said here. So, yeah, um, everything Assange, you know, revealed is things that the public deserve to know. And the fact that they're using, you know, the Espionage Act on top of that, and I, I believe they also have like a couple other hacking, um, hacking charges against them. That's being like that's being propped up by this testimony from uh, Siggy the hacker. You know, that's the um, the fucking uh, King of the Hill kid looking guy that recently came out and basically revealed that he lied about this. And on top of it, on top of that, this guy is a pedophile. <laughs> he's a he's a convicted pedophile. And this is this is who do you not? But it makes sense. It makes sense, especially with that CIA story. I'm actually going to be covering that um, either Thursday or Friday, or or either went Friday. I'm probably going to cover Friday during a live stream. I'm going to be doing a live stream Friday too. But um, but they just got the CIA just got caught, you know, engaging in pedophilia, like, and it makes sense because this guy, this guy's basically an asset for the CIA, Siggy the hacker. So um, but. He recently revealed to Stunden, which is the Icelandic um, uh, journalistic outlet, he revealed to them that he lied about it. So now, like that that part of the case, you know, the hacking charges are severely that argument is severely dismantled because of you know the this witness this witness's testimony, him coming out basically saying, yeah, it was all bullshit. But of course, it doesn't matter uh, when it comes to Assange. You know, they're 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 trying to you know they're trying to bury this guy. That's what they're trying to do. And, you know, all the war crimes that we always knew about um, that that we that we thought the United States was doing, but never had concrete proof. But he provided that. And this is honestly this is why they don't like him, because he does what the um, actual media fails to do. He actually exposes power. And that's what they don't like. So, you know, all of these things here, you know, the coup in Honduras, you know, all of this shit. This is what the United States does on a regular basis, on a daily basis. Um, and again, I had a friend. I recently, um, you know, had a had an interaction with a friend where he thought I was, you know, oh, why are you doing what about isms? You know, when it comes to the, you know, the democracy summit and when it comes to the whole China, um, I posted like an article about um, like literal, literal modern day slavery being being uncovered in Georgia in the fucking United States. Modern day slavery being um, exposed as being a thing in, in the fucking United States. And I kind of posted that talking about, you know, even if you do believe the Uyghur, um, the the Uyghur uh, narrative and everything like th look at what's going on here in the United. This is like. It's, that's not what aboutism. That's pointing out America's crimes, your own fucking government's crimes. Like, and that that is that's my problem with Americans. They only want to point out Americans' crime, um, the government's crimes when it affects Americans. And when it, you know, nobody ever ever talks about you know the the um 
the global south that the fucking United States terrorizes on a daily basis, you know, the Middle East where they literally fund all these extremist terrorists and, you know, in the region. Same thing in China. Um, you know, nobody ever talks about how, you know, the, the United States terrorizes these foreign countries, man. And it's like never gets talked about. But as soon as, you know, as soon as as soon as an American's life is affected, that's when. You know, you're supposed to care. And that's why that's why I talk about imperialism as much as I do. And that's why I appreciate the work Assange has done so much because it's revealed, you know, the U.S. imperialism. And there was a video I covered on my channel a while ago. I may be linking it above. So definitely go check that out where Assange was talking about the money laundering, um, basically the money, the money laundering operation that was going on with the Afghanistan war, revealing that's what all that's all the Afghanistan war was about was money laundering. So um, was changing the American citizens tax dollars into the pockets of the weapons manufacturers company in the military industrial complex. So it was all about and that's why they don't like the guy. So moving on. Almost account uncountable egregious breaches of due process should have killed the remotest chance of Assange's extra extradition. Let me just highlight three and the three points he brings up are fucking amazing. But this is what a lot of people have been talking about. This is what I've heard Richard Richard Medhurst talking about, especially is how literally you had the United States literally spying on him while he's talking to his lawyer. So he doesn't have, you know, um, I think it's a pro uh, lawyer client privilege or whatever that's called, like where they, they can't listen to you. They, they were doing that. They were spying on him. They plotted to assassinate. He's going to get into it. So let's go ahead. Um, once it emerged that the United States government had secretly recorded on video every legal meeting between Julian Assange and his able and eminent lawyers over several years, the case should have been thrown out by any self-respecting judge in, in any democracy. But again, the United Kingdom is the United States is a little bitch. So they're not going to do that. That's why that judge, the judge that denied his extradition at, or originally, that's why she didn't let him go. Because she knew enough. She, she was kicking the can down the road to let somebody else do it. Once it emerged that the key witness against Assange was an Icelandic thief fraudster and this is what i was talking about earlier and convicted pedophilic uh liar who moreover now freely admits that his testimony on which the charges are based was a pack of lies any true judge would have found um against the uh w w I, I guess that's a word for ruled i guess would have ruled against the united states government again the united kingdom is the united states's little bitch so they're not going to do that and once it emerged that the United States government had laid careful plans to kidnap Assange in London and, if necessary, murder him outside Harrods in a street around the Ecuadorian embassy, the value of any U.S. assurances about what would happen to Assange uh, reached rock bottom. They would not be relied upon and extradition could not possibly uh, could not could possibly could not could not can't read right now could not possibly be a uh, continuance now. I haven't covered this yet. I might cover it soon, maybe Friday, or I might save it for Monday. But Richard Medhurst, actually, so they've been making assurances saying, like, when, I think one of the things the United States brought up during the hearings, um, the, the recent hearings, was that, um, oh, well, well, since he's an Australian citizen, uh, we'll let him serve his time in Australia or whatever. So extradite, extradite him to the United States. And if we, you know, if we find him guilty on the charges, we'll let him serve a sentence in Australia. Well, there was a guy um, who different circumstances than Assange. I think he got caught like trafficking weed across state line or across, um, you know, he, he was basically trafficking weed from Canada into the United States and vice versa. And he realized like that, that the feds were on to him and he ended up um, fleeing to Spain where I believe he was born in Spain. So he was actually a foreign that, you know, a, a Spanish foreign national and the United States, you know, um, requested his extradition in Spain, you know, met the requirements uh, or or were willing to extradite him under under the condition that if he were prosecuted, he serve his sentence in Spain because the file Spain has their rules and things like that and everything when it comes to family. They don't want to break up the family nucleus and everything, which this guy, you know, ended up having a family during that time period um, when he uh, fled to Spain to avoid um, his charges. So. Um, I want to cover that story. Probably I might do it during a live stream or I might do it as a separate video on Friday. I don't know yet, but um, 
But yeah, the United States completely broke the rule. They they completely broke that extradition. They they literally it almost came to the point where Spain almost like I think like repealed if that's the correct legal term, uh, basically almost repealed the um, extradition treaty that the United States and Spain has. It got that bad. Um. So, and this is the thing. Um. That that same guy he actually went on Richard Medhurst's show. And he was talking about how like this happens to a lot of people. A lot. This happens a lot more than people would realize. So, his whole argument was that yeah, they're they're going to do the do the same thing they did to me. They're going to do to Assange. That's exactly what they're going to do to him. So, um, it's just and it's crazy, bro. It's 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 crazy. Uh, however, the printing presses are not rolling for Assange, uh, being quietly killed in Belmarsh prison. Again, it just got revealed. Back in October, he had a stroke. I, th- I believe he actually had the stroke during the hearing, like during when he was like in the virtual court. So he didn't actually go to the real court. He was in the he was still in the prison, but for the virtual court. And I think the guards actually forced him to go because he wasn't feeling well and he had a stroke during the hearing. So like his like people like to bring up his just his mental health, which is important, but his physical health is actually deteriorating. You got to realize this guy lived in a fucking embassy like he lived inside for like seven, eight years. I think nine years, actually. He was in there since like 2011 and they came. They went in and got him in 2019. So what is that? Eight years. I failed math, guys. Sorry. I'm a lot in high school. Um, Eight years. But yeah, sir, you know, he was he he stayed in that embassy for eight years and now he's in this prison. Like, which is literally one of this. They literally say it's like the um the Guantanamo Bay of the UK, basically, where like they have all these terrorists in there. But the fact that he can't even get out on like bail or house arrest or something like that is fucking ridiculous. They literally let a member of ISIS or, or Al Qaeda, one of them, they they literally let him serve his sentence under house arrest. Um, and and Assange Assange, who's not a violent criminal, isn't allowed to, which is fucking insanity. It just shows you what they're trying to do to him. It shows you. Um, the air hostess style Western journalists being paid handsomely for their skills at reading um, auto cues are silent as to his fate and the fate of their profession. They know that if this is happening to Assange, it could happen to them. But like the arrow that flies in the night, they long ago kill that possibility themselves. There will be no glad, confident mourning for them, only servitude and p- pieces of silver. Now, there are there is more to that article. I'm going to link the article down below. Um, or the op-ed down below, but this was fantastic by George Galloway, and it sums up, you know, a lot of what's going on with Assange, but especially what's going on with the media, just the media blackout of this. The only person I've seen talking about this is Tucker Carlson. That's the only person that's been consistently, you know, talking about this. But you can't even get, um, you can't even get people in progressive media to talk about it. the Young Turks. Straight up, smear him. You already know how the Young Turks talk about Assange. Um. You know, Jenk Uger was saying he was like a fucking Russian agent or something. Just crazy. His bull, his Russiagate bullshit that he was pushing at the time and still pushes now. I believe they just, they literally just like said this. Literally, they said the same thing they said about Aaron Matei. They said it about Max Blumenthal like a couple days ago. I was going to cover it, but I'm just, I, I'm not, it's, it's, it, there's no point in covering TYT anymore. There's no point in talking about them. Same thing with Sam C. Like all these people are there to lead you astray. These, you know, And like I said, Misty, who's been advocating hard body for Assange, ama- does amazing work around Assange, you know, a- Assange advocacy, because it's about journalism. It's not just about Assange. It's about journalism. And that's the point she brings up all the fucking time. But you get these dumbass people, these dumbass, quote unquote, socialists, you know, the people that have hashtag all cops are bastards in their fucking um, profile pictures. And they have like the socialist hammer and sickle emblem in their fucking profile pictures all that all that nonsense or the people who spout off all day about you know socialist this socialist that like oh why well, the people that focus on assange so much are just fucking crazy it's it's bro it's ridiculous like the left has lost all sense of being um of being you know pro super pro freedom of speech and anti anti um law enforcement and government they're not actually that because they want law enforcement to come in and enforce things like mandates it takes law enforcement to do that they want law enforcement to um enforce mandates and lockdowns you saw the whole spat between um homeboy and max blumenthal about 
the lockdowns and everything. I'm telling you right, like I, I, as a worker myself, as a worker myself, I didn't have to worry about lockdowns because I was an essential worker. Like I work at a, um, I work at like a liquor store type atmosphere now. Or not like a liquor store, but like I work in a warehouse where they ship liquor out and shit like that. Like I promise you, if they if they were to do lockdowns tomorrow, I would be considered a fucking essential worker. So I'm still gonna be forced to go out to work anyway. But even if I wasn't, I don't want to be locked down and not like if I miss a paycheck, I'm fucked. No, if I miss a paycheck, I'm fucked. Okay. And y'all talk about well, if the government does, they're not going to do it. So fuck off. No. <laughs> Like, you out here fucking up people's money and wonder why they don't fuck with you, bro. That's the problem with leftists, bro. They're not, they they don't consider actual working class people. I know I'm going off on a completely different tangent now, but this this something that's been on my mind. Like, like it, it's fucking like, 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 it just, you can't even get people to fucking get on board with Assange. That's easy. That's easy to do. That's fucking easy. You can't even get them on board with that. And they use the old, oh, you got super Trumpers and, oh, Jimmy Dore's advocating for, oh, no, no, Assange is bad. Like, it's fucking, like, it's dumb. It's dumb as fuck. Like, if you, if you think like that, you're a fucking moron. And you deserve, uh, you deserve all of the government boot on your fucking throat that you deserve, man. That you, that's coming your way. If you think like that. And it's just crazy to see, like. You know, if you if you don't and 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 like just to the figureheads, to the media, like I'm not even gonna talk about mainstream media because we already know what it is with them. They don't fuck with Assange. They don't fuck with him because of the D, the, you know, the DNC hacks and leaks and everything. And he's working with Russia. We watched. Um, I was literally watching Morning Joe the other day, and they were basically spewing off the the RussiaGate lies that have been debunked thoroughly. You know, saying Assange was working with Russians and he threatened national security, blah, blah. The same old nonsense lies that they talk about. Um, it's just it's it's but but so so we know what it is with mainstream media. But the fact that progressive media, you know. It, it's crazy. So-called, quote unquote, progressive media, when really they're just fucking liberals. Honestly, let's be real about it. And this is coming from a nigga. I don't. I don't identify as leftist anymore. I don't identify as none of that shit. Cause it like in America, none of that. Sh none of that shit means anything, bro. Especially when it comes to the left. There is no left in America. There is no left. They got rid of all of them in the '60s, and you got left with a bunch of pussies or fucking narcs. That's literally all you got. You got pussies and narcs. Take your pick. Yo. We don't got no Malcolms no more. We don't got no fucking Martins. We don't got no Fred Hamptons. We don't got no Black Panthers. We don't got none of that, bro. On a white folk side, Eugene Debs. Even the labor movement has just been pussified, bro. You can't even get you can't even get them to get on board. You can't get them on board with Assange. You can't get them on board with General Strikes. You saw what they did to Fred to the Fred Hampton leftist. Nothing. Med, like Medicare for all. Nothing. That they that they want you to just entertain yourself with their punditry bullshit and shut the fuck up and maybe like 30 years later you'll get health care that's literally what they want from you that that's what these talking these figureheads want from you and their their coverage of assange definitely proves that how many like i'm about to go i'm about to scroll through i'm about to scroll through you know i'm gonna do it with y'all actually yeah i'm gonna pull up on my phone i'm gonna scroll through and see how many I'm on majority report to YouTube page right now. These are, these are, these, <laughs> this is literally their titles. Are you ready for this? Steven Crowder exposed, um, explores Kyle Rittenhouse's sexuality. Teachers must play squid game dash for cash to supply. Fox host in disbelief over socialist Kashama Sawant win. You, and finally, you might not like Assange, but you should oppose his extradition. Libertarian Rand Paul uh, hypocritically requests disaster. Um, the myth of the good war. Uh, Lauren Boebert crowns herself fart queen. Kanye West's publicist threatened Georgia um, election. Um, it would be, dog, they literally have one video about Assange. They literally have one video about Assange. One. And then it's, you may not like Assange. Bruh. That should tell you that should tell you every fucking thing you need to know about them niggas, bro. Real talk. 
And that's just one of those shitheads. That's just one of those fucking dumbass channels. That's just one. So that should tell you, I'm fired up, bro. I just got off work. You feel me? I'm finally settled into work and everything. You know, the, the job I'm finally in, settled in. You know, I'm fired up right now, bro. Because this is some bullshit, man. Free Assange, bro. Free Assange. There's no way that man should be sitting in a cell, being away from his family. He got his wife sitting up there crying for it, bro. Like, that's some bitch-ass shit, bro. Like, the, just the, like... The way they treat the, the way is being he's being treated for doing journalism by other journalists, bro. That's what infuriates me. I'm a nigga. I'm a rapper who works at a warehouse and I do punditry in my basement. I don't even pretend to be a fucking journalist, guys. I'm just talking about politics, telling y'all how I feel about politics. I'm a pundit. I'm not ashamed to say that. That's what I am. I'm not a journalist. Um, maybe one day I might explore that. I might want to. I don't know. But right now, what I do, the American art, this is punditry. This is me giving my opinion and my take on things. That's that's literally the, the definition of punditry. I, I'm I'm sure that is. But um, and I and I also do it to talk to y'all to you know um engage with other people that's in the politics as well. That's why I started the channel as well. What Assange does, you know, is journalism. And a fucking idiot like me who's doing this in my basement right now can fucking see that this is this is the most important story going on right now. This is the most important story right now. I have my own stories that I think are important, but I that that is that are important to me. But I realize this is important right now. That's why I'm spending what? Where where are we at? There are like 30 minutes on this shit right now. Because this is important. This is about journal, this is about freedom of speech. Those people aren't for freedom of speech. Majority Report, the Young Turks, fucking Rational National, Humanist Report. None of them niggas, bro. They're not for, they are, they are what you call liberals. They are what you call shit libs. And they don't like hearing that word. Like, oh, that's, the, that's a clear sign of a right winger. He calls you a shit lib. Clear sign. That's what they are, bro. Neo progressive. I'll actually like, I like the ring of neo progressive better. I'm pretty sure Nico House came up with that. Yo, Nico's that dude, bro. I fuck with Nico heavy too. But, but yeah, these these motherfuckers, bro. Like, stop listening to them, dog. If you're if you're if you watch, like, I don't care if you watch them. Watch them if you want to, but just realize they're full of shit. Even if they mean well, they think they even if, even if in their minds they think, which I think a lot of them do, think they're doing right by you. You need to recognize that they're fucking not. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Like, I used to watch Young Turks. I used to watch Majority Report every now and then. I didn't really fuck with them like that. I used to watch Humanist Report a lot. Didn't like Rational National. I would watch him every now and then. He was kind of whack, honestly. He had, like, he has the fucking personality of fucking paint drawing. But um, I, fucked with, I fucked with Humanist Report. I fucked with Kyle Kalinske. I fucked with Crystal Sager. All, but you got to realize these people are either in it for the check their intentions are misguided. They're mis they're they're leading you astray. Um, or all the above and more. You no, know, there's so there's so much, you know, there's so many lists. I mean, you got Vouch out here calling himself a fucking CIA agent and shit or FBI, whatever the fuck. Yo, whatever the fuck that nigga's on. I tweeted out. I said, all y'all motherfuckers, I got all cops are bastards in your you got a cab in your fucking profiles. Y'all better get this nigga the fuck out of here for that bullshit. I don't care if he trolling or not, bro. You don't play around with that shit. Don't play around with that shit, bro. Bitch ass nigga. I'm sorry, bro. Like I said, I'm fired up. But um, but yeah, man. Free Assange, bro. Um, if you're if if you're if, if the people you watch aren't you know making Assange important right now, bro, then then you shouldn't probably you probably shouldn't be listening to them niggas for a lot of stuff. For most things, you probably shouldn't be listening to them. Because they're leading you astray. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there. I know that one was kind of long. We're at 30 minutes now. We're at the 30-minute mark now, 29-20. Um, as always, guys, thank you for tuning in. Um, like, subscribe, and share. Emphasis on all that. And comment down below. I've really been enjoying the engagement you guys have been doing with the videos. Um, especially that last Whitney Webb video, man. You guys have really been doing great on the comments. Keep talking to me, man. Keep talking to me. I want to hear what y'all think. Talk to me, baby. 
story still canceled story lane still canceled that has nothing to do with politics but um yeah so yeah definitely comment um as always guys you know i like to remind you that the patreon is live there are videos on there i believe there's a couple like videos i put on there for me and franco's interview i had frank analysis on like a month or a month or so ago and um uh we had a couple conversations that i felt like these are dope convos but like i kind of want to put them you know somewhere else because i want to put like the political conversation like we were talking about like our favorite rappers and music and shit so um and i also have uh my alien videos on there you know my my opinions on extraterrestrial that, i think that was the x-files theme song sound like it. maybe it didn't but uh yeah and a couple other videos on there um so definitely go over there and check it out. You know, there's nothing behind the paywall. You can go watch it. Definitely go check it out. But if you can, show love. It will be greatly appreciated. Uh, you know, a great way to help support the channel. Um, yeah, as well as uh, the link down below. I'm pointing to the wrong side. Link down below. The, 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 the QR code down below. Uh, that is a path to help support the channel as well. So definitely go check that out. Um, if you guys can. And uh yeah, as always, I'm gonna let you guys know there's going to be videos on Thursday, I believe. I'm po no Wednesday, because I'm posting this on Tuesday. So I'm gonna have videos tomorrow. I may have a video third. I'm probably gonna have a video for the rest, you know, at least one video for the rest of the days of this week. So tune in, man. And uh thanks for tuning in. You already know free Assange, free that man. And uh yeah, peace. Peace. Hey.